What's going on, y'all? So let's what's going on everybody so we are back again for another episode review of the real housewives of potomac this is season five episode six the text her around the lake house okay so we get into this episode and it picks up directly where i left off last week with ashley and wendy up there arguing okay and i stand by what i said wendy had a right to feel the way that she felt but the way that she said things or whatever the tone of things it was fucked up or whatever all she had to do was ask monique could she bring her baby monique would have said yes just like she made the exception for ashley and that's all that it is maybe because wendy is new she didn't know that she can do that and so i'm not gonna hold her her feet to the fire too much okay but you know um she could have said, you know, my bad or something if she didn't want to give a real apology or whatever. That would have been the most mature thing to do. You know what I'm saying? But she didn't have to give an apology if she didn't want to. She didn't want to. And, of course, Ashley and everybody else took offense. My thing is, why Robin got to put her mouth into it? Why anybody has to put their mouth into it? But Robin been opening up her mouth a lot. Okay, girl? Calm down. All right? But they was going back and forth, back and forth. You this. This why you ain't got no female friends. No, I have Celine sisters and I had this. And I just don't have friends like you because bitches like you are fake and all this stuff. And, you know, bitches like you don't get to call me Wendy. They call me Dr. Wendy. You know, and next thing you know, Wendy calling her broke or whatever. And I was like, wait a minute, broke where? Everybody was like, hold on, excuse me, what? Bitches coming out of their mouths and stuff like that. And, um, you know, Ashley said that was a dumb comment that you said, oh, you calling me dumb? You calling me dumb? I got four degrees. Now, let me tell you something, Wendy. I got one degree, okay? But you don't hear me flaunting it out. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't, I, I don't like that, okay? Because for some reason, and let me tell you the reason why I don't like that. Because it's already a stereotype. It's already a stereotype that's around about how Africans don't see it for African Americans, Okay? You were born in Nigeria, and they do hold education to a higher standard. Well, I ain't even going to say to a higher standard, to a high standard. There you go. And, you know, they look down, the stereotype is that they look down on people that don't, especially African, African Americans, okay? That's just a stereotype. That's just what I've heard. That's just what I've seen or whatever. So don't come for me. I'm saying. And you are playing into that. By you keep on throwing out there that you got four degrees. You got four degrees. Okay, bitch. And you can still be a stupid motherfucker with four degrees. You can. Okay. You can still let dumb stuff come out of your mouth. And you did that. You did that at one point. You know. So um, that's what was going on. Of course, you know, uh, Robin had to call her out on that. Why you say she broke? Her man is a millionaire. Her man is this, whatever. I was taken aback by that comment, too. And so they tried to, you know, of course, Karen is like, I don't understand what's going on with this girl, Wendy. What is her issue? What is her deal? You know, they go to their separate quarters or whatever, trying to call their families and all that. Um, Candace and Wendy do have a conversation. And even Candace... Candace was trying to tell her, like, when you start going in and nah, 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 and talking about she broke or whatever, like, you know, her man got money, like, they not broke, and, um, you just went a little bit too far, okay, you was doing a little bit too much, I was here for Candace telling her, you know, you did a little bit much, okay, you know, and, I mean, I guess, because you're trying to get acclimated to this group, you're not all the way there yet, so you need to calm down a little bit, that's a little tough, but you need to calm down a little bit, but see, Wendy cleared that up in the uh, confessional, she said, listen, I didn't say her man was broke, I said Ashley was broke, broke ass, and she broke uh, financially, so, you know, she double broke, and then when I sat here and I thought about it, I said, oh, well, on that case, I get what you mean, Wendy, because you're right, it is Michael Money that she's spending up, okay, so, <laughs> but truth be told, we don't know what uh, Ashley's financial is, and I truly don't care, but I understood where Wendy came from when she explained it in the uh, confession. I was like, okay, Wendy, you on thin ice with me. You know, I want to like you so bad, but, you know, if you throw out there one more time about your four degrees, bitch, I'm going to knock your ass out. Okay, I'm going to come back up there, and I'm going to be like, bitch, what? What them four degrees going to do? Okay, what are they going to do? You know, she was like, my man rich, too. I said, all right. <laughs> they was just trifling. Girl, next thing you know, it's the next morning. Um, You know, Candace talked about something she could barely sleep because she felt like bugs was uh, crawling on her. I said, oh, girl, what's going on in your lake house, Monique? You ain't had no exterminator come over there. You knew people was coming, you know. But um, you got Giselle and Robin out there jumping on the beds and stuff. I said, well, what if the bed would have broke? Okay, a bitch like me can't do shit like that, okay? Big girls got to know their limits, you know what I'm saying? And that limit would have broke the bed, okay? Um, uh, It's bad enough I got to lay y'all on it or whatever, but... It is what it is. Um, 
anyway, moving on from that. So, you know, they get down into the main house. Uh, you know, they, everybody's in their robes and stuff because this is a little gift basket or whatever that Monique had gave everybody to be up in their robes. And they was talking about making the food and making breakfast. They're going to have a pancake off or whatever, you know. And, uh, you know, between Giselle and Robin, not Giselle and Robin, but Giselle and Monique. Monique talking about her pancake. Giselle talking about hers. They going back and forth, having a little fun banter. You know, Giselle is even amazed at the fact that she went from, no, I don't want no fake hugs from this bitch to, you know, keying it up in the kitchen with her, you know, cooking. So all of that is going on. Meanwhile, you know, Ashley in the room with the baby and she was like, you want to call daddy? You want to call daddy? I don't think that we're going to get him on the phone, but you want to call him? So she called Michael and Michael does not answer the phone. Meanwhile, they go back a little bit like 12 hours or some shit like that. And Candace gets a text message talking about some. She just seen um, uh, somebody, one of her friends or whatever, saw Ashley's husband up in the club with uh, some strippers and saying that he got a boyfriend and a wife. And then sent a uh, screenshot of him, a picture of him being there. I said, what the hell? And she was like, what am I supposed to do with this information? How am I supposed to? I said, girl, you glad that shit hit, it landed up in your um, lap. You know um, you know what to do with it. Either you tell it or you just leave it alone. That's what you do with it. So as they're doing a little pancake cook-off, you know, it is a little fun thing for the girls. Start the day off, you know, a little light, little comedy or whatever, in a good mood after the way things ended the night before. Um, you know, so basically... You got Giselle and Monique going against each other. They were being judged on presentation and taste. And for presentation, Giselle Pancakes get 11 out of 25. For taste, she get a 22 out of 25. For a taste, um, well, for presentation, for Monique, she get a 23 out of 25. And for taste, she get a 16. But Monique wind up winning when you add all of them together, 35 to 39. Monique said, Giselle's pancakes taste or look just like her fashion fashion choice. And I agree once again, well, not once again, for once with Robin. I don't care if the shit is ugly. It just got to taste good, okay? Because sometimes that ugly shit be tasting good. I don't care about the presentation sometimes. Depending on what it is. Like when it comes to pancakes or whatever. Girl, if it looks, it, it can look all, it don't have to be a perfect circle or whatever. It don't have to be stacked up perfectly. Girl, as long as it tastes good, I'm going to eat it, okay? I'm going to eat some of it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But Karen said, Giselle shit tastes like not, um doodle. -doo. I don't know how doodle -doo tastes, but I know how it smells. So it smells like it tastes. Um, I said it tastes like it smell. I was like, well, yeah, damn. You know, Kim just don't see it for Giselle this anymore. So that's where that's coming from. You know, and then Candace made a good point. Um, and we've all seen it. And even if you like Monique, you have to agree with this or you have to, you know, see where she's coming from. And I do like Monique, but I can tell that it's some things that I don't agree with with her. You know what I'm saying? She said the pancakes, Candace said the pancakes basically describe um, both of them well. We got Giselle, I, but I don't agree with this part about Giselle, okay? The presentation may be messy or whatever, but it's good on the inside. Giselle is not a good person on the inside. I truly don't believe that, okay? She probably somewhat, but she's not all the way good on the inside. From what I've been seeing, no. And then she said the stuff about Monique, you know, presentation-wise, it's pleasantly, aesthetically pleasing, you know, but it's a little messy on the inside. It's not all the way good. And we have come to see that it's like, I'm even questioning some things that, um, you know, Monique has said and done or whatever that's making me go, hmm, is it really real? You know what I'm saying? So I get where she coming from. Plus, Candace already put it out there that her and Monique has yet to speak to each other since she's been up in the house or whatever. They're like avoided each other. And then Monique gets on the phone with her husband and he's supposed to be coming out there the next day. And, you know, he wanted, she wanted them to grill or whatever. He didn't want to do all that. So he thinking about just catering. Mind you, this is her birthday weekend or whatever. And so she feeling some type of way about that. And she was like, you know what? I'm just going to tuck it away into a box on, uh, on the shelf, just like I did the whole candy situation. But at one point, 
point, one of those boxes is going to fall the fuck over and fall down, okay? And it's going to be a big mess. And we already know which box is going to fall over. And we are, and see, that's the thing. I, I don't like when they start the episodes, the season off with the drama that, the big drama that they going to have, okay? Because I'm, I'm waiting for this fight to happen. I'm waiting for this issue to happen. Like, they, we all are, okay? And let me pause this right quick. Let me pause this right quick because I keep on getting comments about this and I don't understand why and I've been seeing it in multiple videos. Lovecraft Country. I told y'all to watch it. I watch it for my own pleasure. It is four episodes in and you do not see a review. Y'all should already know. If it ain't no review for the first episode, you're not going to get a review. Okay? Especially two days later, you're not going to get a review. I've already said that I'm not reviewing it. I'm watching it for my pleasure. I do love the show and I want you guys to watch the show. Okay? I might discuss some of it up in my What It Is video. But other than that, you will not be getting a review from me because it's a complicated show, but it's so good. I just want to watch it for my pleasure. I don't have to review everything and you will live. Thank you. Okay, so back to the episode. So, um, you know, at that point, Ashley had came out, you know what I'm saying, joined the festivities and, you know, um, Giselle and Wendy went outside to have a little conversation and she was like, you know what, I really do want to like you. I like you. But, you know, the things that happened last night, it kind of made me, you know, want to say I'm good on her right then and there. I said, that's some real talk, okay, because she wasn't expecting her to, you know, just come up out of the box like that. And, you know, she was like, you and Ashley haven't even had no issues prior to this. So it was a little off-putting to see y'all going back and forth like that. And, you know, she was like, I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. I understand. It's not too hard to understand where she was coming from. She was upset at the fact or she felt the way about the fact that, you know, she has this newborn baby who was a premature baby and she needs help. And she's also a, you know, a new mother in a sense, not in the sense of that this is her first child, but she's a new mother all over again. And she don't like to be away from her baby either. And had she known she could have brought her baby, she would have been able to bring her baby. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, you know, it's not really hard to understand. But uh, I guess for Wendy telling her this, she understood what she was coming from, Giselle. And um, she was like, you got a lot of misplaced anger that probably should be going at Karen because she the one that was talking about you and talking about this and all this stuff or whatever. I said, Giselle, you are being messy. Okay. What was the reason? What was the reason? Granted, I would like to see a little face off between them two. You know what I'm saying? And of course, of course, of course, Wendy does what? Throws up her whole degrees and what she the first in her field of and, you know, all this stuff. And I was like, God damn, Wendy, I was here for you for a second. Then you threw that up in there. I'm not hating on anybody that got higher education, baby. Because let me tell you something. If I wanted to go back and get my master's, I can go back and get my master's. If I wanted to go back and get another degree, I can do that. I just don't feel have the time and the energy to do that right now. I've thought about it, but I just don't. And, um financial aid and the loans I'm, I'm still paying that shit off girl i just that's that's a motivating force not to you know what i'm saying so girl i get it i'm all here for higher education but girl stop we get it we get it and so everybody's about to go fishing so the girls go fishing um candace and i think robin was in the canoe or whatever together monique was in the canoe by herself a uh, little boat by herself, whatever. Um, of course, they're going to be complaining because Monique, especially C Candace, you know, she little girly girl. You know, she said, look at this bitch being James the Jungle Hope. <laughs> that that was funny to me. Listen, let me tell you something. My great dear used to take us fishing all the time. We used to go to Wolf Lake. I had a terrible experience over there. Let me tell you something. It was, uh, I'm going I'm to be real. Don't laugh at me in the comments, okay? But... I wasn't, I was big, but I wasn't this big when I was young, okay? I've always been a chunky girl, you know what I'm saying? And so, but I was active. I was chunky active, you know what I'm saying? Um, and my mama was the same way. My mama used to run track. My mama, kids fucked her body up, okay? We fucked her body up or whatever. But, you know, my mama used to be on a track team, you know, she had awards and stuff like that. But I'm saying that to show you that, you know, I used to be on the volleyball team a little bit, athletic or whatever, in um, grammar school and shit like that. And, um... My um, granddad took us to go fishing. Now, to go there, you had to go down this steep hill to get down into the pond, okay? And it's a whole bunch of trees and all this stuff, whatever. Baby, I don't know what happened, but I lost my footing 
one of these times we went down there and that was the last time Ashley ever went down there because Ashley didn't even walk down there. Ashley rolled down that motherfucking hill, okay? I said, oh my God. And if it had not been a little plateau area, I would have probably rolled into the pond, okay? I was so scared. I was crying so much. Y'all, my big ass was just tumbling. <laughs> I said, please don't gather momentum. Please don't gather momentum. Please don't do that. And um, my granddad got me just in time, okay? Pulled my ass. I was like, oh, my God. It was so embarrassing, and it was so difficult. I was in so much pain trying to come back up the hill. It was a lot. It was a long slope trying to get down there, and we had to use the trees to pull up or whatever. It was a lot. It was a lot. But, yeah, we used to go fishing back in the day. <laughs> That's all that I needed to say. <laughs> memories okay but yeah they have a good time on the lake um you got um karen and you know just uh, i'm only trying to show them how to do the fishing and stuff like that giselle karen and um ashley and wendy sitting on the dock or whatever doing their little fishing while said monique and um candace and robin was out there on the water of course monique is enjoying it you know everybody else they're trying to do their best to enjoy it and at this point wendy has a conversation with ashley you know she Somewhat apologizes in her own way at first, and then she gives an apology for the way that she came at her, and she said, the way that I came at you, the things that I said, calling you a bitch and all that stuff, you know, um, at first she wasn't really going to say the words, I'm sorry, Ashley had to egg it out of her, but then Ashley said, I will step up and I will say I'm sorry for, you know, the way that I came off at you, and then therefore Wendy said what she needed to say too, and I appreciate that, we don't need nothing else. And that's all that needed to be had. You needed to let the um, moment simmer down some, let common heads, heads prevail, and it will work itself out. And I'm glad that they didn't carry it on for days and days and let this be a reason to have a beef or whatever. And given that they're going through the similar things, they can come together and be there for each other. Because, you know, we hear uh, Wendy talking about the reason why she felt what she felt. You know, she's telling her about her babe and then... Um, the fact that her husband sent her a video of the baby and she's getting emotional about it. And then Ashley's talking about the fact that she was going through postpartum and stuff like that. And she's having a hard time getting out of that. So they're connecting and I'm enjoying the fact that they're connecting like that. But, um, <clears throat> Karen said, now see, bitch, I don't know what's going on between Wendy. She is confusing the hell out of me. First you up at 10 and now you down to a zero or whatever. Like you this way one way, now you this way. Like girl, what the hell is going on? I said, Karen, let it go. Let it go. It's peaceful now. It ain't for you to understand, okay? Maybe this just how she roll or whatever. I feel like I don't know what it is. I, I don't dislike Wendy, you know? And I just feel like Karen is just trying to find a reason to not like her. Like what did the girl really do to her? I still don't understand till this day, you know? And so everybody, you know, been to do the fishing again and that was basically it so everyone is off the lake now um ashley is talking to michael facetiming him asking how everything has been doing uh wendy was out there pumping or whatever uh you know giselle was in her feelings because she couldn't talk to jamal because of the you know service is bad out there understandable they're in the woods and Karen, she did get in contact with Ray, but she's trying to understand why is he not just so excited to talk to her like he used to be in the past. Girl, I don't know what's going on with Ray and Karen, but at this point in time, it's it's they 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 are in the um danger zone. Okay, I think whatever it was about Karen at this point has worn off on Ray. Like he just not feeling it right now. Maybe I don't know what they need, but it makes me cringe when I see them now okay because you don't feel the love or the chemistry between them no more and it seems so one-sided it seems so one-sided it's like one person is trying and the other person is not but um Ray just seems like he's in his own world at this point he want to do his own thing like he lived with Karen for all these years now he ready to do his own thing now that Karen is doing her own thing um but you know, um, Ashley, you know, she talks to Michael, all that stuff, whatever, who cares? And so Monique goes in there to go get the food. And, um, you know, Candace was talking about how she, she probably would be like Wendy, Robin and, um, Giselle about the kids. They're not too much about the kids, but you know, they're parenting in their own way, but they're making it work, whatever. And she just hurt. She's just, she said looking at Ashley makes her have hangups about you know, 
oh, excuse me, having kids or whatever, it, it makes her nervous because of the simple fact that you see Ashley, she seems like she got it all together, but then, you know, she's dealing with the fact she had post and trying to get it together, whatever. She seems happy on the outside, but she's still struggling, you know, and that frightens her because it can happen. It doesn't happen to every woman that has a child, but it's a possibility that you can get postpartum, especially during your first pregnancy, you know. And so I understand her fears and concern, especially when that really wasn't a part. You got other issues going on. I get it, Candace. And so they go in the house to eat the pizza. And at this point, they complain it, as they always do, about the fact that they don't like it out there. You know, the idea was cute to come out there, whatever. But who brings their friends to a lake house? There's nothing to do. About to go stir crazy. I'm like, then you make up something to do, okay? you ain't nobody tell you to just sit there and be quiet truth be told i understand like don't bring me out somewhere and you don't have nothing planned for us to do because i could have sat at home and did all this myself you know by myself or we could have did this at my house in the city i get that but if it's supposed to be a bonding moment everybody can put forth some type of ideas or do something or whatever but we don't have to complain about it because she didn't have to invite y'all to her home she did not have to invite y'all to her home but on the other hand like i said don't invite me somewhere and um we ain't got nothing to do okay they were sitting there quiet as hell i said ain't nobody gonna say nothing but truth be told when i'm eating i don't want to talk i don't want to talk let me enjoy my food or whatever i go in the other room first of all i go in the other room and let y'all do what y'all gotta do but then they do a little pageant off okay you know, Giselle comes up with this little thing about a little pageant out between Ashley and Candace. And, you know, of course, they get into doing the walk and then doing the question, what, how do you feel about being so short? And so it was cute. Um, and then we going to get into the fact that Candace gets this. <laughs> Later on in the episode, we're going to get into the fact that Candace gets this text message about Michael. I'm looking forward to that. So, you know, Giselle asks Candace about how she feel about being short. She answers that question. She asks, um, you know, Ashley about how does it feel to have a big forehead? Ashley gave a good ass answer on that one. Karen wasn't feeling these questions that, um, you know, uh, Giselle was asking. It was like, you won't want nobody to ask about your messed up legs and stuff like that or whatever. Okay. But, all right. So then they go on to the talent portion and, you know, Ashley do a twerk. They was like, oh, I know you can twerk with a torn booty hole. And then Candace, of course, get up there trying to sing happy birthday. Candace cannot sing, okay? Candace cannot sing. We're just going to be honest with ourselves. She cannot sing. Um, she tried to sing happy birthday to uh, Monique. And as Ashley pointed this out, you've been singing this song for multiple years since you've been on this show. Truth is told, she has, but whatever. Of course, you know, Candace won the competition. Um, later for that, everybody's going back to get dressed or whatever. And I mentioned earlier in a review that they said 12 hours earlier that, you know, Candace got this text message or whatever about Michael. It was 12 hours later in the day, so I'm correcting myself. Candace up there getting prepared or whatever for the dinner and all this stuff and she get this text message come through talking about some why your girl boy for husband was up in here with a whole bunch of strippers and stuff like that and then saying that he had a boyfriend and a wife and trying to get women and people to go back to the hotel with him and all that stuff and then we see the picture of Michael Darby okay so of course Candace she was like, y'all gonna bleep my friend's name out, right? Okay, cool. She said this girl that sent her this, um, she got this information from a good friend of hers. The girl that she got it from is a good friend of Candace, and the girl that gave her this information is a good friend of hers. So basically, they're playing telephone tree, but I 100% believe it. I believe it, okay? And when Candace went over there to tell Giselle of all people, to tell Giselle messy ass of all people, she said... I don't know what to do now. When the text came through, I didn't know who it was that she was talking about. You know, I just got through being cool, getting back cool with Ashley. And she just got through sending the confessional. This is what she want them to be cool. No shady moments and stuff like that. Okay. Having a good time with each other. Kiki and all that. And now she get this information. So she don't know what to do. Girl, when Candace, when you said you ain't know who it was that they, she was talking about before the picture took forever to load up. I said, yes, you did know. Who else amongst this group of people and who else in your circle has had issues with men before being accused? 
issues of liking men as well. You know, being a little bisexual. Okay, no one else but Michael Darby. I knew that from right off the bat. And truth be told, I want Michael to live his truth, but you know, you can't push nobody out of the closet yet. Okay, and truth be told, we don't even know if that's the type of arrangement that they had. You know what I'm saying? And truth, I honestly feel that that is. Okay, mind you, um, when Ashley was on the phone with her husband, she said that they went, he said they went, you know, he had a business meeting. They went out for some drinks or whatever. You know, he got a little messed up because they haven't really been drinking that for a while together, you know. And so I guess that's when the stuff went down. Giselle is like, Ashley ain't even been gone seven months. I mean, seven minutes yet. And you out here acting a fool. And so at this point, Candace is like, I don't know what to do, which is understandable because she just got back cool. She don't want to get in no more Darby drama. And so she just got back somewhat cool with Ashley. So what should she do? I need to tell her, but I don't want to tell her, but I cannot not tell her. You know what I'm saying? And so at this point, Giselle is like, well, you're going to have to tell her at the um, dinner and all that stuff. I said, Giselle, you just want to see some mess go down. And honestly, I do too. So they go out to like this crab spot or whatever. Um, they're talking about, first of all, everybody in the restaurant looking at them. I was like, what y'all looking at them for? But that would have been me. If I would have seen a whole group of people come in and then the camera crew, whatever. Bitch, I'm trying to get my face somewhere up on that. <laughs> you know. But anyway, um, they get there and, um, you know, Giselle asks how was everything with uh, Juan and the kids and Robin like... I'm calling to see if he didn't got the kids ready to go to school. He talking about some girl. I just let them stay home. Like, boy, you can't do just one day for me. Just one day. And then Monique is talking about the same thing. Like how, you know, she got a whole staff put out for Chris to do this and do that or whatever. And she wants that for her. Like, why don't you take that consideration for me and surprise me and do something for me? Not having me to have to do everything for you. And so, you know, Robert and her was vibing on that because they both married to athletes. And she was like, Juan got humbled when they got into that financial situation. And as long as Chris um, still is financially stable, he probably still going to be treating Monique like that, you know. But at this point, they asked Karen, Giselle asked Karen, how is it with, um, you know, uh, Ray? Karen up there trying to sugar foot around up. Beat around the bush about the fact that her and Ray really ain't clicking like that. She tried to make it sound like everything is all to the good, but it's truly not. Wendy catching on to it, and she just don't understand it, okay? Moving on from that, uh, Monique is the one that asks Ashley, so how is Michael doing? Is he missing y'all or whatever? Girl, yeah, he missing us. He really want us to come home or whatever. You know, he had a good time. Um, He had a little board meeting or whatever with some dudes that came down from New York. And so after that, they had a little boys night out the night before and all that stuff. Meanwhile, Giselle is just going, hmm. The eyes, the expressions, just, just like looking at Candace like, go ahead and tell her. Mind you, Candace is, you know, feeling some type of way because Ashley had to sit next to her. And I just wish, I'm pretty sure they're going to tell her right there at the table in front of everybody because it's more drama that way. I wish she would have probably pulled her to the side and told her to the side, like told her on the slide, not in front of everybody. Don't humiliate her in front of everybody and have to defend herself in front of everybody. Tell her to the side just like you took Giselle to the side to tell her. But that's just how it ended. It ended into another to be continued. But you guys tell me how you felt about this episode and I will see you guys later. Peace.